Hello guys. Yes, as you can see, I'm back at Putney Valley um, Cemetery because if any of you guys watched my last video, you know tragically that I um, I didn't find Howard Carter's grave and unfortunately, and the, the worst part is, talk about I was not that that far away from him, but it was a case of literally, I. it felt as if I'd been walking around for about half an hour. I literally don't think it was that, but it felt like that. And essentially, if you may have seen the video after that, if I hadn't have left when I did to get over to Richmond to see um, Richard Attenborough's grave, I never would have got to see that grave because literally that church was was about to shut about 20 minutes after I got there. And that was like this. I found him, the final resting place of Howard Carter. Just there, guys. <sighs> oh, God. Yeah. I've always said it, but it's amazing of what you do when you've got proper descriptions. How much easier was that? There you go, guys. Get a good look at his headstone. Yeah, I apologise if I am being a bit loud right now. It's just the only thing is I've noticed when I um, put it on the uh, tripod stand and of course I move away, my voice does get a bit more timid. So I would like to get it nearer to the headstone, but it's, um, yeah, trouble is you won't get the whole headstone in there. So yes, this is the final resting place of Howard Carter, who of course, as it reads, um, Egyptologist and discovered the tomb of Tutankhamun in 1922. Yeah, hard to believe, isn't it? But that is a hundred years ago this year. <clears throat> that looked a bit crooked to me there. I must admit, it's beautiful to see that um, You've got lots of um, souvenirs then left. Yeah, I saw one. Um... Apologies to the person I'm sitting on their grave, but that's a lot easier. And that, yeah, because he um, he used to have a, his original headstone was a lot more. Um, you know, it was just a sort of a plain, simple grave, and it did fall into disrepair and. Um, I'm trying to remember who it was. It was one of the national places. I think it's like English Heritage or something. I'll have to flag up the info afterwards that gave him this new headstone. So this is a lot better. And as you can see, it seems a lot more people definitely do come to visit. <laughs> How appropriate little Sphinx is and that. So yes, I didn't come in handed myself. So uh, he hasn't got a what do you call those things? You know, things you, you know, those things you put flowers in. Yeah. Always bring artificial flowers when I can because, of course, they last for a fairly long time. I won't say they last indefinitely because they don't. Although they do last for several years, I might add. Oh my God, I can't believe I have actually found that. As you know, I was pretty gutted not finding this the last time, but you know what? It was actually probably a good thing in a way, because as I found out afterwards, it, and that, I would have been gutted if I'd found him and then found all the other people, because yes, as you'll see in the title, I've found several other people in this cemetery that we're gonna go and hunt for. And you may think, oh great, how much luck is she going to have this time around? Um, yeah, I've done my homework, so I think there's an excellent chance that I'm going to find all the people that I've got on my list. Although, who knows? So, yeah, so, oh my god. As you can tell, Egyptology has been been a big part of my life for I think 
was year four in school, so I was, what was I then, eight or nine? I'm trying to count, nine probably. So, mm. <laughs> yeah, if you can, uh, I see what you guys can do your maths. Uh, that will mean that, mm, going on my birthday this year, that's about, hmm, about 30 years ago when King Tut first came into my life and all I'm going to say is uh, Egyptology is a love of mine that's been with me ever since. But the wind's getting up so let's go to grave number two. Take care Howard. Thank you very much.